Hello and welcome to my editing tutorial. This one is the iPhone 6 Plus. I've just posted a selfie on my Instagram account and I wrote down an explanation of how I achieved it using the forward facing camera on the iPhone 6 Plus and using various apps. Uh, here is the image in question after um, editing it and I'll show you the before and there's the before. So I'll show you the techniques I've used to achieve the final, the final result um, and hopefully it's something that you can practice on yourself. Clearly because it's the iPhone uh, forward facing camera it's not the best quality but it's perfect for using it on a profile picture of say something like Facebook or something like Instagram, Twitter, it works, works good for it. Clearly, if you wanted then to blow it up from there or to print it out for some reason, then it's only limited as how big that will go before it starts pixelating. But for this purpose, this is perfect for the social media apps that I'm currently on. Um, and that's the one that I showcased this morning um, on my burn photography account. And let's go ahead and start using the uh, the apps that I use to produce the final image. Okay, so I wanted a headshot, something like kind of professional looking, um, without using the expensive cameras and uh, lighting systems that are available. So for this, I wanted something that's that's going to highlight my face, but not be so harsh, blowing out highlights. Um, so for this. This was taken in front of me is my kitchen and I've got a kitchen light strip light that goes on the top of the ceiling and it's perfect light to highlight my face as I stood just in front of the doorway which is what I'm standing in and behind me is all the dining room which I've turned off all the lights and all that you can see is from where the light from the kitchen is hitting the back of the top of the ceiling and the back wall as well. I'll show you how to edit all this out afterwards. Um, but. Because it's the forward facing camera, I can see myself in the camera so I could picture myself with, in the middle of the frame to get me perfectly composed, um, the, great, the, the best composition, um, take a few pictures, get a few different poses. Sometimes it can feel a bit vain taking pictures of yourself, but we all need a, a, some kind of profile picture, um, like especially if you're, like, you're having magazine uh, features or people want to do interviews, they want a headshot. So without, like I said, spending too much on equipment. I've just used my iPhone 6 Plus, uh, and this is the headshot that I would want to achieve. So if I now copy that, and we'll open the first lot up into Snapseed. This is where I'll be doing my first edit, just paste the image, which is the first image that Yep, which is what it, which is now just opened up in the main menu within Snapseed. Love Snapseed. I use this on pretty much ninety nine percent of my images. Um, even on my landscapes, this this helps bring out certain things that you lose transferring from your iMac to the iPhone. So this brings back some more details and that. But for this, because I've got a beard and I've got uh, and, and the hair and I've got a few lines, I want to. I want to sort of like um, bring them out more. I don't mind looking a little bit older than I am, but uh, but the beard makes for a great feature to bring out. So I press on the pen tool, go up to HDR scape, and this creates a filter of a HDR look. Um, it originally starts off at 50. For me, that's a little bit too much, but I, it's not. But I'm going to knock it down to about 35. Um, this brings out some shadows, brings out some more details, uh, and then I'm going to put the sh put the um, the brightness up to about 15. Just bring out some more brightness within my face, and then because of in my kitchen, there's uh, I've got sort of like beige um, walls, tiles, cupboards. There's a it it's the light is pinged off beige, orange, yellow all onto my face, so it's a bit too orangey for what I want it to be. So what I'm going to do, I want to knock that tint off, so I'm just going to lower the saturation within the filter, HDR tool, and lower that down to, uh, let's go to, let's go to 15. 
Actually, let's go more. Let's go more. Let's go 25. That's better. Yeah, we'll go to 25. Uh, and we press the tick button back into the main menu. So next I want to go in, in, is into details. So go up to details and I want to add some um, structure to this. This adds more more depth, uh, more um, it's, it makes it more 3D type looking. Um, and we're going to add some sharpening to it as well to get more even more detail out of this image. Warning first, for anyone that's a bit paranoid about looking old, this processing now will start making you look a lot older than you actually are. Um, I personally don't mind looking older than I actually am, but I know some people will. But don't panic too much because later on within this process, we'll start adding some more filters that have a faded look to it, which make it a lot more softer, trying to keep the, the details within my beard and my face and the hair. So we're in structure, so what I'm going to do now is to add structure, I'm going to go up to 35 on this. And then we're going to add some sharpening, and on the sharpener I'm going to move it up to about 30. Like that. Um, so it, it's there's a lot of detail now within this shot, so much detail. Um, just slightly pixelated now, but again, for what we need it for, it's perfect for what we need it for. So yeah, happy with that. So uh, press the, the tick, back into the main menu, and now I'm going to go up to Tune Image. Up to the Tune Image, and I'm going to raise the brightness. Like if you scroll up and down, you'll see different types within those filters. Uh, and then what you just select the one that's highlighted and then you can move left or right to go plus or minus. So I'm on the brightness first and I'm going to up the brightness by about plus 15. It is a little bit sensitive so just be very careful when you're doing it. Um, I'm going to lower the ambience. This should now darken all around the outside and hopefully keep my face um, highlighted. So I'm going to lower the ambience down to about plus 35 see how that's darkening it's darkened around there but kept my face highlighted which is what exactly what I wanted go down to contrast I want to add some more depth within the beard um, and some darkness and I'm going to go up to about plus 20 and then my saturation again I'm going to go lower on my saturation I'm going to go to about plus 12 up some shadows to about plus 12 and also let's lower the highlights just starting to be a bit too much here so I'm just going to lower the highlights a tad to about probably plus uh, minus 10 yep that, that works okay so press the tick to have that done my next part is the vignette so go to the vignette starts off in the middle and if you pinch you'll see circular you see a circle and you just pinch in to go smaller pinch out to go wider so I'm going to bring that into where about to about there so this the circle is just to the top of my hair and just to the bottom of my beard so I'm just gonna raise that up a little bit just touch the, the dot and you can move you can move the vignette around so about there and I'm going to bring the vignette, the outer brightness, if you see here you've got two, outer and inner. So I'm going to bring the outer to minus 77. And then the inner, I'm going to plus that by about 12. Again, so I'm enhancing more of my face and darkening the background as well as my top. Okay, I'm going to okay that. For this process so far, I'm quite happy the way that's turning out within Snapseed. We're going to do various uh, additions to Snapseed of, of this image. <coughs> Excuse me. But for now, I'm, I'm happy with how this has turned out. I'm now going to put it into VSEO Cam. So I'm going to save that. Save that image. So done. Now I'm going to go into VSEO Cam.
and I'm going to add that picture, OK it, select it, go onto the tools. Now there's loads of filters that you can get for VSEO Cam, and I've downloaded and bought quite a few because a lot of the uh, the filters are so so nice. Um, it's got the vintage feel to them. Uh, so I've purchased a few. So the one that I'm using here is all the way at the end, which is T1. So I select T1. Now that's like really faded and a bit too much for me, but you can control how much filter you use or not use. So I'm going to go to T1, click on that, and I'm going to knock that down to about plus eight. So then it's brought some more of it in beyond the back so it's not too faded. Press the tick to done that, press the little arrow, go onto the little spanner, which is now the, all the tools that you can use to edit within VSEO Cam. Um, and I'm going to do this manually in each different thing. So I'm going to go to sharpening, which is the triangle, and I'm going to up my sharpening by about plus two. Let's go to plus two. Sharpening is very delicate in here. It can pixelate very quickly within the sharpening with VSEO Cam. So I like the details that's brought out there. Okay, that. I'm going to go to contrast. I'm going to work my contrast by plus two as well. It's making the image a lot more darker, but I'm not going to. It's not what the look I'm after because I'm going to fade it out in a bit more in, in a minute. But I'm quite happy again. It's dark, darkened my hair and the beard. Um, and then I'm going to go over to saturation, which is this box, and go to about my, minus two. Take some color out of there. Then go to highlights. Now the highlights, whenever you move this bar, it just lowers the highlights that are already in the image. So I'm going to lower this because again, it's just gone a bit too white there, but I'm going to lower this down to about minus three or plus three, sorry. So it's not the highlights, lower those highlights that was in the face now. Okay, that, I'm going to go to temperature. I'm going to go to plus three. This is making it warmer looking. I don't want it to go that much. Let's go to plus one. Yeah, plus one. Yeah. Uh, go to the skin tone. This changes the colour of the skin. So if I go all the way down there, it's gone a bit more reddy colour. Go all the way along, goes a bit more greeny colour. But I'm going to go down to... Let's go to minus one. Just to add a little tint of redness. Going to go to the vignette next, and I'm going to go all the way with the vignette. So I'm going to make this even more dark around the outside. Going to OK that, and now I'm going to go to fade, and I'm going to up the fade to plus two, which is now faded a lot of the image. Okay, I'm happy with the way that's turned out, so I OK that. Press the tick, it's now in there, and then download to my camera roll at the actual size that it is. I don't want to make it any smaller. I'm going to come back out of there, go in again to Snapseed, and open up the last image on my camera roll, which is the one that's just been edited in VSEO Cam. Okay, we're now back into Snapseed in the main menu, and I'm going to go to the Vintage Filter which is there and in this I'm going to put the brightness, lower the brightness down to minus 11, uh, lower the saturation to minus 11, style strength to 4, it's 2 orange so I'm going to go all the way down to 4 and the vignette to 11. it like that, that's perfect. OK that, and then I'm going to save a copy of this image. It will duplicate it from the original image to this image, and I like to see that process so I can go back into it. You can save it, 
And when you go back into Snapseed, it will see, it'll still see the settings that you used before. But this is the way I like to do it. It's the save a copy. Once I've finished the final edit, then what I'll do is I'll just delete the rest of them off my phone. So I'll save a copy. And then now what I'm going to do is, you'll see here, I've got the coving on my wall behind me in the dining room. And I've also got coving there, I've also got some curtain and a part of a light fit in there as well. I don't want any obstructions visually within the back that I can see, it just it's not, it doesn't look very professional, I want it more clearer looking. So because I've saved it, I'm now going to go into another app called Handy Photo. I'm going to go into the gallery, into my camera roll and open up the last image, which is the one I've just done. I'm going to zoom in and I want to now delete the majority of that. So press the hand, go on to retouch and now I'm going to do is to draw a line along there and then once you've done that just press the screen and you see how it's disappeared. Don't worry too much about that little bit there, we can get more into that when we go into um, we're going to go back into Snapseed. So again, I'm going to go around the light, around the light fitting, touch the screen, gone. I'm going to do the majority of this. The bigger the objects that you do, the more difficult it is to try and eradicate whatever it is that you're trying to get rid of. So if you can try and keep them as small as possible, it's, it's a lot easier. So that's quite a big block there, so this might work out first. It's, it's, it's gone too much here, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to just do less. That'll do for now, and then when I go into Snapseed I'll get rid of more of that. I might be able to get rid of this as well. Okay, that's, that'll do for now. I've also got a couple of strands of hair that I'm not too happy with, so I'm just going to go around there, around there, um, yep, then press the screen they've now disappeared. Okay, press the tick, go up to there, go into the little disk and save to my gallery. That's that now done. Now I'm going to open again in Snapseed, open up the last image on my camera roll, which is there. And now I'm going to get rid of the rest of this. So from the handy photo, it's tried to save it but it looks a little bit too much. So now what I'm going to do is to go into spot repair, zoom back in, and I'm just going to click on there. Make it a bit bigger. It's just mixing this up nicely, this is. Just blending all that in. Don't like that one. Picks a certain place within the image. Um, Do various spot checks on them. Okay. 
Okay, let's go back to this side of the ear. We had a little bit of coving left. Okay, that's looking better already. Yep, so that's that bit done. So now I okay that. And now I'm nearly getting there to towards the end now, but for me, my shirt, even though it's black, it's showing up a bit too much. And I want to darken this to concentrate more on the face. So two things that are uh, standing out at the moment is the buttons. So I'm just going to get rid of the buttons. Buttons are gone. Uh, Okay, that back into the main menu, and now I'm going to use some anchor points, which is the way you use this is selective. So click on selective, it's already highlighted a plus, which means it's going to give you an anchor point. If I click anywhere on the picture, there's the anchor point there. So I'm just going to now knock the brightness down to minus four and the contrast uh, to minus 75 all the way down to minus 75 uh, and then the saturation down to minus 6 now if you press and hold you see the red area is whereabouts this is selecting to do um, this setting that I've just done for it so I'd, I want it on the shirt not really on the face so if I move this down to the more to the corner that's why I want it there. So now if I click that, I want to copy and I'm going to paste another one there. Paste. Again, just knock down that redness by using the, the area that I want it to, to go in. It allows you to do about this eight times before um, it won't do any more and then you've got to sort of save the picture and come back in and do more if you want to do more. So at any one time, it's eight selective points. So if I press this little button there, which is the eye, it, tell, it shows you what it looks like. Get those rid of those markers and it shows you then how it's looking. Uh, and then you can adjust from there. So what have I got? A six, I've got seven. Let's see if I can do one more. Paste. Right, let's bring that down. there let's have another look yep that's perfect so if I OK that now with the arrow back into the main menu and pretty much nearly there so I'm just going to save that save another copy I'm going to go to my camera roll and have a look at the picture and I'm going to go to the edit and I'm going to go to color and go to the contrast of color and on this point this is where I um, I up the contrast within these colors so I'm going to up the contrast to about there done that and pretty much there. So the last thing that I do is now I go into PS Express which is Photoshop for the iPhone or the iPad. Go to my camera roll, last picture, uh, go onto these 
bars and settings here and the corrections that I want to do. Now I'm gonna what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pump up some clarity, some more clarity within the picture. This in turn does make it a bit more pixelated, but now I'm gonna to go to reduce noise and I'm gonna go in a bit more and I'm gonna oh I'm going to reduce the noise, go up to about 15. See how that looks. Probably go a bit more. Let's go to 20. Yeah, that's looking better. And then, bar at the top, save to camera roll. That is saved. Go along to the last one, and there it is. There's the full picture of the final result using those different apps. So I use Snapseed, I use VSEO Cam, I use Handy Photo to get rid of some objects that I don't want in the image. Um, I use some camera roll editing because the camera, the edit capabilities within the camera on your iPhone are really, really good. Even though I only just use the contrast to add some contrast within the colours, um, but I, I do sometimes use the whole lot of them to edit an image. And the last thing, I'll put it into PS Express because it could be slightly pixelated. I just want to reduce a lot of that pixelation with the noise. It makes it a bit more of a smoother image. But I've still maintained some details within the shot. Uh, so let's look at a before and after again. So there's the before. There's the after. All from using the forward-facing camera on the iPhone 6 Plus. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching this tutorial I hope it's helped you just shows you that you don't have to have all the fancy gear to create a nice looking portrait um, try out these techniques but remember your image might be slightly different to mine so mine's just what I did with mine use some of the guys that I've used but you might have to obviously go plus or minus on some of the settings to create an image to your preference uh, good luck with it editing I love editing any images um, it's my favorite part of the process of taking pictures um, I hope you have loads of fun and join me again next time for another tutorial. Thank you.